Jaguar. Hey, you should be out working. We should be. 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 All right, everybody, let's uh, call today's Harbor Commission meeting to order. It is May 11th, uh, two minutes after four o'clock. Thank you all for coming. Is everybody signed in on the other side of the table? Uh, Victor, did you do roll call, please? Yep, Bill Brown. Here. Tim Bartlett. Here. Bill McCullough. Here. Terry Strauss. Here. Tom Gray Jr. Here. Bill Coors. Here. Jeff James. Here. John Baker. Here. Chip Everest. Here. And Greg Fisher. Here. We have a quorum of full board. Great. I'd like to personally thank all the commissioners for not leaving in between the meeting we had before this one. Um, so that's a good sign for everybody. Right? In your packet, where are the minutes from our uh, March 16th meeting? Are there any uh, changes? Corrections, additions, subtractions, deletions. I did read them and I'd make the motion to accept as written. Motions are made. Is there a second? Second. second. I had one typo. Fire away, baby. It's all under blessing of the fleet. It's a bow sprit, not a bow spread. I think. Uh, uh, where is second where paragraph is? under the yeah. blessing of the bow fleet? Sprit. Heading. So we're on the third line, third row. Well, let's fix that. Yeah. Thank you. Good eye, Bake. Yeah. He's an English man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so your wife's job in the library is we pay it off for the Harvard Commission. Yeah. This is good. That's right. <laughs> All right. Motion's been made to accept the minutes as directed and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same proposed. Motion carries. Thanks for putting those together. Victor, you and your slot. 
Uh, on the agenda, if it uh, pleases the commission, I'd like to add one item. We had a request from a seasonal boater who uh, passed away about a month ago from his estate to uh, deal with his uh, slip fee, whether we would re be willing to entertain refunding that. And we've never had that situation in my 35 years of doing this. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, we'll we'll that to... Can we auction it off? Oh, oh. <laughs> that would pay for the building. <laughs> Not the slip, right? Just this fee. <laughs> let's uh, let's add that under new business. Is, is that uh, okay? By consensus with everybody? Yes. Sure. A public comment? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sharon Mahalik. If I haven't met you before, I'm here in the capacity of the chair of Lesson of the Fleet. And I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, last year I was on last week, last month. I was on Zoom last time you met. Um, and uh, we are moving uh, ahead quickly and very successfully this year with Blessing of the Fleet. Uh, we thank all of you for your support. Uh, we've got some printed material that we just want to hand out. So uh, a copy on each side. We're good, just going to run. Give it to Baker first so we know it's all right. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, just a copy of the uh, small version of the poster that's going to be distributed so you can see. Uh, and what the takeaway from this is really that we're having Fleet Week because it's our 10th anniversary. Uh, we didn't do a party uh, again this year because we just were at the point we weren't sure about COVID. And also the cost of labor and food was getting the, the tickets would have been a little uh, excessive. So uh, instead, we're doing a a week of history, a week of maritime activities, and we're very excited about that. Uh, to date, I have to say that without a party, uh, we have hit a record in terms of our earnings, and we're not even uh, at uh, the actual event with a raffle and the IRQ. Um, this event is maybe a third half of the operating budget for the Historical Society. Uh, so very, very important to the historical society as well as to town. Uh, so thank you for your support. And uh, uh, two questions. How many of you have participated in Blessing of the Fleet in the past? Bill, got to work on you. <laughs> um, great. Uh, we will have the Madeline. Uh, last time we talked, we were not sure if it was going to be the Madeline or the Champion. Uh, it is the Madeline that's the larger of the two schooners. Uh, we're excited about this because it's a great vessel to teach kids about uh, maritime history. We're working with schools and uh, day camps, daycares to uh, get kids down for tours. Last time we brought about 150 kids. Uh, last time it was in town to tour tour the, the vessel. Uh, and we're waiting to hear from them as to their plans, but uh, we might have the opportunity to put some people on that vessel for the blessing of the fleet. So if we have that opportunity, I will reach out to you in uh, an email. And if you have any interest, Bill, your name is first on the list. Or you go on a paddleboard. Your right. choice. Your choice. Uh, well, if Irish okay. is ever puts my boat in, I'll be out there. <laughs> well, that's just put around. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, sorry. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to update you. <laughs> so, Michael, how are we handling the 95 footer? There'll be a side tide in the West Dock. So, the south end of the West Dock. Yep, between ourselves and the Wasters. Yep. And you're comfortable with that? It's about the only place we have. Yeah, I don't yeah, they, they've been what do they draw? Because we're about 17, 16. They don't 17, draw 18. more than seven feet, I think, according to the specs. They, so, they've yeah. been in that spot before. Yeah, they were there three years ago. Well, thanks, Sharon, for the update. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, who's responsible for the weather? <laughs> Irish, yeah, you'll get Irish. Yeah, that's not it's the Irish. Yeah, Harvard Commission. Yeah, Harvard Thank, Commission. You. Thank you all. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, uh, any other public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, old business review of the Harbor Plan draft goals. And uh, Victor. Uh, 
fair amount of time working, consolidating the results of the survey he sent out to all of the commissioners on the table. So thank you all for uh, working your way through that. And uh, I felt did a great job summarizing uh, kind of the general feelings here at the table. And our goal tonight is to try and uh, give him some direction as to what kind of questions the survey should ask. So we are getting feedback, uh, some feedback on what we all agree on, and there's a fair number of those when you look at how we put this together. Uh, but as importantly, uh, where we all didn't agree as a group, uh, how we might want to get some feedback from the general public in, in those avenues. Uh, so uh, as you look at the, the 57 page packet that we got from him, <clears throat> Uh, and he went through uh, and he listed the, the goals and degree of uh, high importance as a result of our input to that. In category A, there's, uh, there's probably 12 of them in there where there was a great agreement at this table were, were significant goals that we wanted to see still maintained in the harbor. Uh, open site, open water space, a balance between appearance and use, visual access to the beauty of the harbor, uh, keeping the open water portion of the harbor preserved for activities, maintain control of the harbor's appearance, safety, obviously, number one, uh, the harbor being available for a harbor of refuge, because it is about the only spot to stop quite a ways. <clears throat> uh, the harbor should not be intruded upon to the extent that basic activities such as pleasure sailing, cruising, et cetera, would be forced out. Adequate launching facilities in the harbor and the city pier, promenade, open mooring, and landscape areas are all attractive features of the waterfront. We had strong agreement on all of that stuff. So unless anybody has any issues that didn't come up in your survey, I think we can accept that that's, we all think that's a pretty important part of the plan. Moving on to what he called uh, general agreement instead of uh, for medium importance, uh, there's probably 10 items in there. <clears throat> and these, Victor, correct me if I'm wrong, but these had uh, a majority supporting this, so to speak. These comments were supported by a majority of the people at the board. These comments were um, by generally by most people not ranked the highest, but ranked of medium importance. So most people rank these medium, of medium importance. Uh, they start with pedestrian walkway, uh, visual contact with the trees on shore, uh, maintaining vistas between the boats by keeping planned mooring, spacing, water usage should not make the waterfront a less attractive area in which to recreate. Harbor use opportunities should be available as economically competitive as possible. Certain marginal uses are more a matter of scale than being totally objectionable and should be evaluated on an individual basis. The development of the harbor should be key to the overall needs of the harbor and proportional to its growth. Discourage development that is of a permanent nature, maintain the extent of city sponsored buoy moorings, and maintain orderly planned and controlled development. Is there anybody at the table that has wants to make a comment that, about that that doesn't, uh, that we need to reevaluate any of those individual goals there? I think my only comment. Um in this in general where I wasn't really sure about definition of some of the terms. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't sure how to define appearance. And I, I noticed that in, when I read through all the comments individually on each, each question. And also, um, so that would be one thing. And then on the medium importance, we, in other places we mentioned pedestrian walkway, where would that be? Is that the sidewalk that goes along base? You know, I didn't know what we call a pedestrian walkway. And I think we should call it something and make note of it, whatever that might be in the future, because it would be nice to have a recognized walkway, even though not all of it touches the waterfront directly, maybe eventually it could. So I wasn't sure what, if that was just a sidewalk that goes between the buildings or along Bay Street or a little bit that's on the waterfront. So there's just some kind of clarity issues that I had, and I raised in some of my comments. Uh, from my perspective, I looked at that statement as the sidewalk that starts pretty much at the uh, east end of the bulkhead of the city dock and walks along the bulkhead, turns, goes in front of the Harbor Master Building, turns, goes by a two-hour dock, goes to the south side of Bay Street, and then walks all the way down over to this old park. 
That is the only pedestrian walkway that we have down there. But it could start at Zorn Park as well, you know, because you do have the sidewalk that goes along the beach at Zorn Park and connect that to then the harbor front and then all the way down to Zoll Street. But I don't know that we have, do we have a sidewalk that's walks in front of the pier? I guess we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But that so would be the pedestrian, really part of the pedestrian. Yeah. And so I think that goal is to maintain and call it out. Uh, that walkway. Mm -hmm. And call it out. It stops at the parking mm -hmm. lot by the depot there. Yeah. Well, no, or I think it actually goes to the west. Or it goes down to the west. Yeah. 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 Well, the 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A pedestrian walkway. It doesn't, you know, it just, that's what the goal says. It doesn't talk about a specific pedestrian. Just there needs to be or there should be a pedestrian walkway. It'd be nice to call it out, though, you know, at some point in the future. <clears throat> and I think your point about appearance, JV, I think that's a good question to flush out of the surveys as well. Is maybe ask people, like, what about the appearance? And if you ask them, what about the appearance, you know, do you appreciate or do you like? Then you get those answers from the public about, all right, this is what in general we mean by appearance. Because, yes, appearance is a vain. Broad word, but um, and it means something different to everyone. But right. Once you ask that question, you can get a better idea of what we mean. Good comments, Karen. Anybody else uh, have anything you want to throw in on those medium importance? Many of these are interrelated, as you as you have read. Uh, no goals were deemed of low importance. And that actually, I think, speaks to the the plans aging well, because uh, we last did this over 20 years on this thing, so that's good. Now, there were a number of items in here, but there was no consistent agreement <clears throat> or no easy way to generalize in uh, these goals in here. So maybe we can kind of run down through here and that might help Victor come up with some questions that we may want to get some feedback on, because we weren't able to agree on them at this table. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go through them. Provide and maintain a, a specific area for anchorage. Remember, we're pulling these out of the plan and this plan was written 22 years ago. So some of the language and the way we read the language might be different on that. But the goal of that phrase to my memory, and Bill, you were here when we did this the last time and I don't think anybody else was, but uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, that probably should have been followed by uh, Harbor of Refuge anchorage. Yeah, and on the on the map, I believe it's delineated. It's delineated. I, and I think we should have it, and where it is is where it ought to be. Unless you know, Mike, is does that work for you? I'm sorry. When when people come in and just anchor in the designated anchorage area, that's that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably the best holding ground in the lake. <coughs> so, Victor, I I would guess that that phrase really we've already dealt with because. Harbor of Refuge is one of the items we all agreed with further up the page. So maybe the goal needs to be specific instead of say Harbor of Refuge anchors and people with that yeah. very differently. If you just stick the word refuge yeah. in there, I think that that has a meaning throughout the book. I guess for the people who voted who didn't rate that high, you know, is that what was the reason for <clears throat> I didn't understand what okay. anchorage where it was referring to, so I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Well, that's just my interpretation. If somebody else is reading it a different way. You know, say so that's, that clues but that's I, really I think that's why point. where we were with that. Mm -hmm. I see the harbor of reference to be a separate thing from Anchorage. I mean, if Anchorage is more most allowable in front of Zorn Park, there, which is where I assume we're talking about. Uh, actually, it's at the west end of the. This is a very west end of the bay. Okay, yeah. see, I didn't even know that. So it'd be really good to define that. In the it is if you look at the harbor plan. Yeah. But I mean, when the map. question goes out to the public. Well, do we do we really need that goal on there, Victor? Is what I'm saying. If that is directed toward uh, refuge, if we're going to change it to refuge, I don't. And there's agreement among the board that that's what that means. Then I don't think we need to. Put I it think out you there. strike it from the record. We just stick with what we talked about in the first two categories in there because it was mentioned in there as a high importance. The, the refuge, but I still and see we that do as control a anchorage. Uh, I think you've got a seven day thing in there. We don't allow people to come and drop a hook and stay all summer. Uh, uh, and that's what the refuge anchor is for the area, and it's delineated on the The other example that years ago, probably 15 years ago, was a girl who didn't want to pay for dockage and all this stuff, and she took her little ski nautique and kind of parked it in front of the boathouses and literally dove off and swam to her car, and that's where she was going to leave her boat for a period of day. But I think that's the only time that's ever happened. 
Uh, actually, there's a most most <laughs> tools we have are reactive to some instance. That sort of thing is why we have a harbor. <laughs> So when I think of the word refuge, I think if there's bad weather or they need they need protection. Right. Not just pleasure boaters anchoring by the boathouses. Right? Uh, I agree. You know, so it's a different, different thing. Yeah. It's two different things. Uh -huh. I, yeah, I want I want I the harbor to be a allow, refuge for should allow that too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, it's, but they're different. Yes. Right. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. no. So do we need a separate goal? For just Anchorage, if you like. Well, that's what I thought this one was. Just, you know, we have that for pleasure boaters that come in and want to anchor. If someone needs, needs to get out of trouble, that's a whole different, that's, a, that's much more important. When the freighters come in or, or anybody. Yeah. You know. Well, I guess I look at Anchorage with, uh, you wouldn't anchor out in the middle of the bay. So you come close to land where you have protection, whether you're there for an hour or two days or three days. Mm -hmm. You anchor in an area that gives you protection. And that becomes a refuge, a refuge. refuge area, anchored area. There's also a place to spend the night where you can't get a mooring or a slip or an overnight. Absolutely. And that provides protection for you, which is refuge. Mm -hmm. so I see it also the emergency part of it, but. Well, I think the refuge covers both sides of that definition is where I'm going with this. So it could be short term or it could be because of weather or whatever. The reason you're there is because you don't want to be somewhere else. Because you don't have protection. <clears throat> the only place you got is right there. So would you be okay striking that or would you rather leave it? I would leave it. Is that how everybody feels? I'd strike it. I would strike it. I think it is. I'd strike it. If it's covered, and I don't like I can only see what's on the bottom of the there. If it's covered elsewhere, then it doesn't need to be in two places. I think it did. If you believe that refuge, refuge anchorage covers all anchoring in the harbor, then we've covered it aptly ahead of this. So that one goal that says the harbor should always be available for shelters, harbor of refuge and allowable anchorage, something like that. Because I just know from sailing and having to anchor places, I wouldn't have considered myself going in on an emergency. I'm just looking for an overnight stay. Does that complicate it too much? I don't I think anybody can anchor there unless we prohibit it. So if we don't prohibit it, then you can anchor there. And we've designated that as the place to anchor. So just to maintain order out there, and it's the best place to anchor anyway. We do. I have seen people anchor like off of just just off of the two hour dock, like just down from Wallstrom's inside the moorings and stuff like that periodically. And uh, I guess I'd take it's not a problem until it's a problem there. Do you also discourage anchoring in the mooring field proper? We send the police boat out if we see that yeah, happening. That happened several times last summer. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Karen, would you feel better if we left that goal in there and said provide and maintain a specific area for recreational anchorage? Sure. Is that acceptable to yeah, everybody? Yeah, that works. Is that okay with you, Victor? Okay. So you're all right with that? So we can okay. So let's do that. Thanks. Uh, delineate the extent of development line all around the harbor within the jurisdiction of the plan. I thought we had that done. Do you have a map of the plan, Victor, you can bring up? Assuming that the new plan, when we finally get around to publishing it, will include all the things that we that we have included in past plans that we still agree with. So, like you've got refuge anchorage there, you've got slow no wake. And does it say uh, what does it say just in the space between Irishes and the two hour dock there? Yeah, there's a there's a harbor limit line that runs completely around from the north side of Harbor Point 
all the way to the city limits. Yeah, but it's shown there on the map. Mm -hmm. It's that dash line. Yeah. Uh, you can also see if this map is accurate that there's been right. some uh, private docks that have exceeded that in the Harbor Point area. Uh, and again, this is a the Harbor Plan is a recommended thing. And uh, the repairians over there have the ability to uh, get to what they consider to be navigable water on that. But on the North Shore, where the city property is and, and the private property, we have had that line in there and it is pretty well built out. So where I see where the words refuge anchorage area are. Is that just kind of roughly a circle there? You generally are saying the west end of the harbor. So, so you can anchor anywhere? You actually can. Except yeah. we control the, the mooring area because of our- Other where the darker blue is. Yes. Yeah. Or the channel likely. No. Okay. And the, the city can exercise control over for length of stay for people in there and, and those kinds of things, which we have to, to prevent people from just dropping a hook and staying there all summer. In, in, at the end of the day, anything that we'd go through on the harbor plan kind of ends up on that map. You know, the map's a key component to this thing. It takes, it, it makes it visual and gives you an idea of what is where and where things are and how it works. Jamie, you're saying for this goal that it's already been done. Maybe we need to. <clears throat> That's what I think. Try it. Three or that. Anybody else? I guess, yeah, my question is in the context of what we're doing right at this moment, striking that um, means it doesn't mean we're taking it out of the harbor plan. It just means we're taking it off the debate. The goal has been accomplished. The goal's been accomplished. Okay, so this is goals, not right, the plan. The bigger question is should we change the harbor limit line? And we can debate that as long as we want. Uh, it's not parallel to right from Zoll Street, or it is? It kind of goes at an angle? No, it's not Zoll because it's I mean, think it's all the way to Florida Land. Isn't that okay. artesian over there? Yeah. Yeah. Side? Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah there's the question is, you take it all the way to Weekly Dock, or, you know. So the city jurisdiction ends right about there. Just past the artesian. Yeah. I'm not sure if you eliminate any of it because I think it's still part of educating the public on what all of this means. You know, what's the area we're talking about? You know, for people that aren't as knowledgeable or aren't as involved in voting, may not understand that. You know what I'm trying to say? I like knowing that this is the extent of development line. Well, the question is, is it still appropriate? I, I think it's explanatory if you look at the map because it says the harbor limit line around there. So it, it shows it just like it shows the area where the slope no wake zone is for boats 26 feet and over, and that becomes part of it. And I believe that phrase or that goal is in there. Uh, because it wasn't totally delineated at one time, and that's been done. And it just wasn't taken just away as, a, as an whatever. accomplished goal. So I'm getting confused. What we're doing right now is taking a look at these and saying, you know what, now that we understand what you're saying, it's fine. We don't need a discussion on it. We don't need to put it out to the public. It's a goal that belongs in our harbor plan, and we'll leave it there and we see what it looks like. Is that what we're doing? I think we're talking about whether these goals uh, there where we didn't have consistent agreement need to be in the plan, whether that phrase should be in the harbor plan as a piece of text. And I look at that and I see that piece of text not required because we've already accomplished that goal on the harbor plan. And it's never going to change, so we're not asking for confirmation of that again. That's what you're saying. Yes. And I'm happy to leave it. It doesn't make any sense. I think having the words in the plan is, are good because if somebody reads the plan and it doesn't say anything about it, the, they can say, well, I want to build a bigger dock. And it's not in the plan. 
Well, maybe maybe a, a thing we can consider is um, changing the wording around to say uh, review the uh, periodically review the hardware limit model to see if it needs adjustments. Yeah, or, or something. change to delineate to maintain something like that. Yeah. It's more appropriate. Maintain the extent of delivery follow up. I like that phrase. And I think there's a section of the plan where it says that the map is the culmination of these goals on there, which tells you that the map supersedes the text, so to speak, in there. And the text becomes a reference to it. So if everybody's okay, I'm fine with uh, changing the extent of de development line to uh, maintain as Bill suggested, that it, I'm fine with that. Do we, does the Harbor Commission not have authority uh, east of Artesian on the North Shore? Because there, there, there are no wake buoys east of there. I, the map, you know, the map very distinctly ends at the city limits there, but and yet Harbor Point is not in the city. And so I, I wonder if we shouldn't extend that eastern line farther east on the weekly shoreline. To increase the no wake area, is that what you're thinking? I think part of it is buoyed is no wake east of Artesian. It's the city easy. exercises control. I want to say a third of a mile from its boundary yeah. out into the lake, yeah. half a mile in there, which gives us the ability to uh, put the buoys where we put them, which are asked for the approval from the state because that's why that line yeah. is there. I just I mean. It's such a distinct line when we're in some ways controlling things that go on east of there. And, and we do have the authority to do that. Right. But should it be on the map? That statement? No, just move the line east. Because I'm sure we have movies east of that line. No, I don't think so. No, 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 those are right, right there. Okay. And it ends right there. I think well, the weekly association puts those out. Yeah, well, there's a no-wake buoy out there. It's off the end of the point. I mean, I know there's a no-wake buoy, you know, close to the. Yeah, and that's the third one, the one at the bottom of that map. Yeah, I think okay. it will scroll up. Okay. Well, I I think that line is where those buoys are. Okay. I mean, within hundred feet or something. I, I did so many of them when I'm rowing. <laughs> not looking where I'm going. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> no, you want them gone is what you're saying. Well, that would be all right. <clears throat> to where I like to roll. Uh, moving on to the next, the third one here. Do we want to keep this in the plan or over people's comments? Accommodate additional marina boat docking facilities where possible and consistent with other provisions of the Harbor, Harbor Plan. Does that even need to be said? I think that might have gotten inserted in the previous plan because Wallstrom's was getting ready to expand their um, their dockage. And by putting that in there, we basically said, if it's consistent with the other provisions, it's a good thing, go ahead. I think Irish just did some additional work in there too. And went right to the limit line on it. Bill's point, I think, is that all the all three marinas have built out to the limit line. Mm -hmm. Although, if they can come up with a clever way of doing it, question is: Do we leave it in there, or do we recognize and accept that there is, uh, based on the limit line, there is no more opportunity to expand? Yes, Michael. Arguably, the city has the opportunity, right? You're the only ones with the opportunity. Maybe, but we would have to. No, I'm just saying, I understand that, but I'm just saying the only. There's a lot we of water front where we could do it. Docks. And yeah. the city has the opportunity if they ever chose. We could put a bunch of docks. Yeah. Well, we we would have to go through the same. The Irishes and Wallstroms could ask for the same thing, you know, to move that limit line. If the city were going to do more docks, we'd have to move the limit line or we'd have to move the mooring field. And. No, uh, you, well, because the limit line runs right to the end of the west and east docks. Right, but in between Sutter's and the city, that city park, theoretically, you could add a dark. Uh, I'm just saying that that's the only physical place where dockage could be added 
without a bunch of finagling. So he's saying sideways, not out farther into the harbor, right? I think one reason to leave it in is because I know there are people in the community that feel that we need more spaces for boats. And you can leave that in because it doesn't totally close the door on that, even though it's unlikely to happen. Well, I guess also, JD, remember part of this process is also just to figure out what questions we want to ask the public too. So maybe this is one of those ones where we throw in a survey. And the question we'll ask, the problem with asking that question is, of course, everybody's going to say yes. You know, should, should we put more docks in our, if you don't have a dock, you're going to say yes. And maybe not, because you like the way it is. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the problem, that's getting public input, that's, right. that's right. the nature of the... And, and that's okay, that's totally fine. And I think Bill maybe is in my mind closer than anything else because if somebody comes up with a clever way to do it why should we restrict them if it fits with the plan and it makes sense we kind of did that with the theory right yeah so so we're okay with that in and maybe you ask to uh, generate some response on that uh next item discourage concentrated marina dockage development by the resort associations you know we have to recognize as a municipality that we don't control that all we can do is work with them and express our opinions if they ask and uh, and then make sure that they're following the laws like everybody else's. But I do think it makes some sense to try and encourage conversation with those guys as they, and not just Harbor Point, but uh, anybody else who falls under open hands. My, I guess my question to the Harbor Commission, for those who rank this one a, a lower score, what about it was, um, did you, you know, rank it low? Is it because we shouldn't be in the business of discouraging or encouraging them, or is it um, that we want to think we just don't agree with that goal? I guess for those who or didn't understand it. I ranked it low because I did not know the depth of what the rules were, what I had the right to tell them to do and what I didn't. So I didn't know how to answer it. So I said, I don't know. That's what we do. You're not really knowing the history of the past and conversations that were had in the past, you know, in terms of whatever agreements were reached, informal, whatever. Um, probably a reason that the score could be lower. I mean, what, what would we do at this table if Harbor Point put a 50 slip marina out in front of the casino to the north? What, what would you view our role as? Yeah, we'd discourage it. <laughs> there was a dock there, right? At one point, right? Mm -hmm. Ferry, mm -hmm. right. big pointer. It wasn't an arena, though. Yeah, I think the origins are that, or is, is the idea that uh, there's kind of a limit to the amount of pressure, boating pressure, that the harbor space can maintain without diminishing the quality of the experience for everybody who's out there. It's, when you start getting cheek by jowl and that sort of thing, you know, the more boats you put in, the more degradation, that sort of thing, as opposed to just being against you having a boat. It's not, yeah, I know. I'm not against that. The word discouraged isn't having teeth. No, no, please no. don't do it. No, no, it's just kind of an expression of, you know, let's not make it more intense than it is. I'm sure West Traverse Township would have created a lot of. <coughs> A whole bunch of parking places for the rain. Yeah, but they'd be at Birchwood because nobody's at that hotel most of the time. Well, you could do a funnel Have development a thing in Weekly that put in a bunch of docks if you wanted to. You know, everybody in Weekly could have a slip community big enough. What about if we turn that around and the, the, the goal became encourage communication mm -hmm. with resort associations, collaboration in their use of the waterfront? Mm -hmm. Like that, it sounds better. I think, that's, I think that's more what we're trying to say. Yeah, and that's the question that you get asked in the public survey. You know, which one's a better goal: discourage this or encourage collaboration? Yeah, right. So put on no, right. better right. encourage. Right. If you if you don't have any teeth, right. I think we want to collaborate where we can. Yeah. See what happens. I think encouraging is is a better way of it. encouraging the discussion. Okay with Victor running with that. Mm -hmm. right. 
Uh, plan. Where are we here? Right. Encourage water shore interfaces that do not reflect wave sea activity. You know, that's something that we're dealing with at the marina now more and more with the extension of the Wallstrom gas dock floater that runs out and the seawall they have underneath that. That wave now comes back into the city marina. It was whooping and the other day when it was coming out. It bounces to daylight signs. But that uh, you know, has the wave attenuator system version four or five, I'm trying to remember, out at the end over there. Version one. That, uh, <laughs> on your watch, maybe. <laughs> uh, but I actually, uh, in my mind, uh, that's an important deal because when somebody builds down the road, it affects somebody next door on it. So uh, I, don't, I didn't rate that low, I don't think. Should we give examples of what that means? Well, I think if you go down on a day when it's whooping and you look at, watch the various wave trains bouncing all over in the harbor there, that, that tug, I don't know how big that tug is, 25, 30 feet, or maybe bigger, it was doing 20 plus degrees, mm -hmm. just sitting at the dock. She was talking about protective walls or the, the wave atten attenuation or, you know, gentle slopes where possible, things like that. So it doesn't just... To me, that's a common sense yeah. design component. Mm -hmm. right. So I, I would rate it higher than where we've got it right now. And it would ask or cause the commission, if we were looking at a plan, to look at that plan from that perspective, which I think is good. That's mean I'm going to turn it down because of that, but it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. So what, what would we all like to do with that? Bump, bounce it up in importance or leave it where it is? Or uh, how about instead of do not uh, say minimize or something like that? Because you can't you can't make an interface that doesn't reflect. We, you can try well, to we, we mitigate, say encourage. Mitigate. Encourage that. Yeah. I guess I don't see it as confusing. Uh, it, it's asking the commission to in, encourage, to be accountable for people's reflective waves when they go to construct stuff. So minimizing the wave sea activity rather than do not reflect wave sea activity. Lawyers would have their way with you know, just say <laughs> <laughs> Well, that does not do for are you suggesting maybe it belongs in a different category, a little higher up on our, this is our I think so. list. Um, yeah, yes, right. this is where we didn't have agreement at the table. So, so some of us felt that this was an important goal. Uh, I think this issue goes back to the original Harbor Plan. It's been consistent throughout the whole thing. Um, and the, the people who are most affected by um, uh, wake, wake more than natural waves. I mean, the natural waves you can't do much about. But, you know, a big boat comes in, ignoring the wake thing, it bounces off everything in the harbor for an hour. Give me an example of the interface. Uh, having wave attenuators underneath the dock instead of a solid bulkhead surface. See well. Uh, look at Irish shoes where they've got the tires on the outside that absorb the wave before they come into their channel on it. But wouldn't... Wouldn't, um, why do we need to tell people to do that or encourage them to do that? So, you know, when they do that anyway, wouldn't Irish just want that anyway? Go ahead. <laughs> so if you look at the commercial marinas, including the city, we all use sheet metal walls. And there's a reason because they work, they last, and they reflect waves. That's the downside, right? But the city didn't build a riprap wall and then extend their ramp because it's inefficient. So Commercial operations are going to go to a sheet metal wall. I have experience in our Charlevoix yard where we tried to make a slope and plant grass and it was all pretty, doesn't work. And we replaced it with riprap and then you go back and you replace it with sheet metal. So there is an application for it, whether you agree with it or not. But then there are places like the parks and where you're not having docks that you can use riprap or different ways. 
I think what you're talking about is when any wave, boat wave or natural, hits the shore, does it reflect back 100%? That's the worst case. Or does some of it get absorbed? Like Ford Park, that's a riprap wall, so it absorbs some of it and some of it gets reflected back. Our wave attenuators do absorb waves. They're for our benefit, our marina's benefit, but they also, because they don't reflect back, they help the harbor. So this concerns me as a commercial marina because that is the answer to a commercial marina. And the city has proven that because that's what you do as well. So there's a little bit of care in where do you apply these things? If you are just having a, a, a private residence or a park or something uh, like Ford Park, the launch ramp, riprap or something is a great solution. You'll actually find that mo most people don't like riprap as an ecological thing, but it works. So I think you gotta be careful because if I came back and said, I wanted to build a new marina and you say, you gotta put a non-reflective wall in, it doesn't exist. Yeah, we would be able to. Well, we don't say, we don't say you must. This is a courage. I know, we all know that when you write something down, it's gonna be looked at and of course you encourage it, but then I, you know, we would come back and say, it doesn't work. And you'd say, well, come up with a different idea. And the price of that sheet metal wall just jumped four times because it's a sheet metal wall that's what made out of rubber and absorbent. I'm just saying that we've all used that system because it works and it works over the long run. So how do you minimize it? I know, you know, our attenuators do some of that, but it's not as cut and dry as it sounds. Well, just, just talk specifically about the shore. Uh, if I'm, uh, water shore interfaces. So Say would this example, be for private people? Someone? I would think so. Okay. Uh, but when uh, when the city went from, put the bulkhead in from uh, the Harbor Master Building past the two hour dock with new sheet metal a couple of years ago, we put rip right back out through because we were trying to, to diminish that reflective wave up. And I think that's where this kind of thing heads to is that, you know, when it's possible, we should encourage that kind of stuff to happen, which is just what we did. I agree with you that encouraging it. I'm just, we all know how words get re rewritten. So if you ask that question of anyone, including me, of course, I'd say yes. Say yes. Yeah. So overall, these questions are way too vague to ask people because they're just going to, we all say yes to, we want better views, we want non-reflective walls. I mean, they're very vague questions. So that's a separate comment. But, but. If you really want to you go rank them, leave it. I said, is it? I do. And you rank them from importance. I mean, the other things we talked about just were so much more important to me than this. So yep. I'm out for that, but it's not high. It's not high on my list. So I don't know what that means, but uh, I vote to keep the language and leave it where it is. Leave it up for now. Thank you. Give you any direction, Victor? Some. I'll work with that. Yeah, it's just good to have discussions, and I'll, I'll make sure that he's out of it. Good feedback, everybody. Next one, control user speed in the harbor. Uh, we have done that and have a plan which is delineated uh, on the harbor map, which <clears throat> is unique in uh, the state of Michigan. It's the only two-level speed control set up in the state of Michigan. Are we speed or weight? Uh, well, it's boat size is what it is. And it's it's, it's in no wake. Uh, the initial area is 26 and larger. And then the, the inside is all of So the language is slow, no wake. Okay. So um, does that mean then a jet ski cannot go bombing through the harbor? The jet ski can in the 26 foot and over area. In the 26 and over zone. But they can't inside that right angle line that you see in the middle. All of us. Where it says slow, no wake, so all, all missiles. So, so the slow, so even though they're less than 26 feet, they can everybody has to slow down once you go past Ford Park to yep. the casino line. Mm -hmm. And once you're north in the morning. So what do wakeboard boats do? <laughs> They're slow, but they they fall into the which causes the problem. The which is a not, not, huge not, not exactly no wake. Yeah. Oh, I know they're not. They're opposite yeah. each other. But they meet the size component as long as they're uh, under 26 feet and they're in the right area. Well, we tried. Gosh, and five years ago, six years ago, maybe seven years ago. In fact, it was an orange bolt that stimulated some of this. I no longer own it. And, uh, 
No, I no, it wasn't your vote. I, I wasn't referring to you at all. Um, <laughs> what are you yeah. actually, <laughs> we actually spent a fair amount of time coming up with language at this table that would still have the, the speed controls work in the harbor, but require the no the wakeboarding boats to operate outside of the east. I think line. we actually got it to the point and of being an ordinance. And then and it got shut council down. passed it, and then it went to the state of Michigan for review, and they shut it down because they felt it was unconstitutional. And they were said probably not worth fighting, so we gave up on that. So we've been dealing with that stuff ever since, <clears throat> and it is a problem. If I'm out on my sailboat on a mooring and somebody's wakeboarding, I can't hardly stand on my boat. It's bouncing all over the place. I, I thought I saw jet skis bombing around everywhere. That seems to be you might have said they shouldn't be. They're supposed to be in that outside of the no wing zone. I thought they had the two the two speeds so they could sell water ski from the harbor. That's why it happened. You know, originally there was uh, no control in the harbor, and the original thought back then was to have no no wake from the point to Artesian and all the way west. And there was a big squawk about uh, not water skiing off the little harbor club dock. You know, where else you get water ski yeah. around here? There's no place else to go. And that was back when water skiing was a big deal. So that was the compromise. And we had to legislatively run that through to get that high level deal. So that was a project, but it was successful. So uh, I agree. They should control the speed in the harbor. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it should be a high, a high goal. Not, not one we don't all agree on. I think we need to, maybe we don't agree exactly on how, but we should yeah. control the speed. Well, that one actually could go yeah. up. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. That makes sense to you, Victor? Yeah. It's good we're talking about this because it's clearing up some stuff, I think. Uh, the next one is interesting to me. The plan should encourage the resort associations to continue on limited use of their shoreline repairing and water surfaces. We, Talk about that a little bit up. Maybe we have a comment. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right, Keith Milbury, West Lee. I when I look at that, it's it's really ambiguous. What are you trying to get at? Are you trying to restrict? You know, our families had a mooring in West Lee since the early 1900s. Are you trying to take that over? Are you trying to keep us from putting docks in front of our cottages? What, what are you really after outside of the city limits? Because it affects me directly. Well, the plan doesn't work outside of our delineated area. Yeah, I just, when I see that comment, it's ambiguous. What message are you trying to send? To well, I think originally, and I can't speak for the entire commission then, but the last time we went through this, I think what they were actually trying to do was encourage collaboration so that That's these right. people are talking to each other and somebody doesn't put in a Walmart and somebody puts on this over here. So. I'm, I'm all for it. I think we need to encourage collaboration. We, we benefit from the city. We need to be working collectively you know, to maintain the beauty and the integrity of the harbors, all of ours. To we all need to be good stewards. So, would it make sense to take this uh, language and uh, and say that? So, instead of the city encouraging the resort associations to limit their use, uh, use uh, to have the plan say that uh, we should encourage collaboration from neighboring communities with waterfront exposure, so we all know what everybody else is doing. Or some some language like that. Well, that's really what I think it was about. An extreme example would be what's going on in Hayes Township on Lake Charlevoix. Um, there's a an estate that wants to put in a marina. They're going to dredge into this huge thing, and uh, you know maybe we could do that right at the border where Weekly and uh, Zoll Street come together. Somebody could buy that up and put in a marina. You know that, that would be an extreme example, but. Um, We'd encourage them not to do that. I see what you're getting at. The wording sounds good. If it that makes sense. Your intent, your intent is to have 
conversation in more collaboratively. So I, say it. I think the, the line further up where that we debated on basically the same mm -hmm. subject right. covered right. it. Right. So if we want to just strike that and go with the other, you know, let's be collaborative and right. let it go with that. I'm okay with that too. Yeah, it covers both. Everybody all right with that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Just just strike that yeah. all together. Good deal. Yeah. Um, provide orderliness to the mooring of non riparian boats. Economical moorings. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Provide economical moorings so the local residents can still use the harbor. <clears throat> I think we do provide economical moorings. There's we no, are able, enough, there are enough of them. We do, theoretically. we do offer discount to city people on those moorings. We can't treat them differently in terms of waiting list uh, for preference, but we can't treat them differently preferential for fees. We can't do that with the dot, but we can't do it with the So I think we're already, already there. We're already yeah. there. And we should continue that that's, that's a thing for us. Uh, next goal, provide the city with the ultimate control over two extensive marina development for the harbor. Actually, provide ordinance of the mooring of non repairing yeah, boats. I think orderliness in the mooring of non repairing boats is probably a good idea. Yeah. Oops. Did I skip one? I skip yeah. yeah. Sorry. Provide orderliness of <coughs> the mooring of non repairing boats, which we have actually done. That's what the mooring area was all about. That's why the rules and regulations were and how long you can anchor are in the books. So we do have strong control over what happens there. Can I make a point about that? Um, it's been pointed out to me by several people, especially the police, that a lot of boats in Harbor Point and also down in Wikotansi do not have mooring lights. Oh, when I was working for the boat shop. Every boat that we took out to mooring had a mooring light hanging somewhere in the boat. I bet you there's maybe four or five boats out there on an entire mooring field that actually have operating mooring lights. And I think that might be something to, some part of a conversation. Well, that's a state law. I mean, it's, right. that's required by law. And it'd be like us saying we need to not speed as we go down the park and we're in a parking lot before you use your boat. But it is also part of the collaborate and communicate with resort association. Right. As you're right, most of them don't have a lot. Right? In the mooring field, do you sign a contract with the city when you rent that space? And then that, does it have that? It's not required to have a mooring like in the mooring field. Yes, we have a mooring field as Harbor Point. Mm -hmm. Well, to my knowledge, you're required to have a lit an operating mooring yeah. line. Are. It's not a requirement in the mooring field. Okay. Because yeah. 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 the corners of the mooring field all have lit buoys on it. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it's marked on all the maps on the charts. Yeah. Yes, it's just become an enforcement thing. We encourage everyone to do it, but since it's not enforced, most people have stopped doing it. Yeah. It's, it's become a losing battle of trying to convince people because there's no. There has been very little of any enforcement of it. You know, part of the Marine Patrol has been education. Yeah. That's why we fund it as much as we do. Uh, but maybe what I'm hearing is that uh, it would be more appropriate if we okay. educated them well, yes, and then we stayed on it and made it happen. And that technology has advanced tremendously with LEDs. Yeah, hardly any bad things. But, so I guess that. Uh, I yeah, I, I agree that maybe some. Communication with the different uh, outfits with Harbor Point to notify all the homeowners that have folks there. We put Townsend to notify those homeowners that have a mooring that you're going to be required. And if it is a state law, let them know that they're, you know, they could get cited for not having a mooring line out there. And just work through the association to talk to their people. Yeah, the same kind of that. So JB, this applies to our mooring field as well as other moorings that are around the harbor. Such our mooring field is delineated on the charts and by the right. buoys that are lit on the corner, and those boats do not need to show an anchor light when it's dark. Yeah, so these are the Everybody else, anywhere else you anchor, should have a mooring light that's on from dust to dawn. Okay. So I don't know if that's really clear. And if you're anchoring right. in the harbor, you're supposed to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. But that's that's maritime law. It's not a goal of a harbor plan. That's uh, like saying you have to have a license plate on your, your vehicle. It's 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 a law. That's what it is. So maybe we need to educate that more with the, the marine patrol and, and be a little more firm in how we handle that stuff 
Because if you're preaching it and it's not happening, because we're not enforcement and we got a disconnect here. Well, it would be appropriate for the Marine to contact the association so they can send us a good golden. Go we have a contact with Har Harbor Point right there. So <laughs> I, I like enforcing it and I like giving a ticket, just like I'd get a ticket in town if I didn't, or wherever I got a parking ticket. Uh, so, what do we do with that sentence? I think we've already accomplished that goal. Provide orderliness to the morning and non-repairing boats. Yeah. There are reasons to keep it in the plan. It should be an ongoing. So maybe continue providing. Ongoing. There we go. I could buy that. Yeah. Uh, provide the city with the ultimate control over too extensive marine development of the harbor. Would that? Uh, I'm not really sure if that. I don't exactly remember why the hell that was. Mine too extensive. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. remember exactly what I said. That's one step too far for the city. We are an enterprise and need to stay that way. We don't need any further jurisdiction and infringement. Is that pull over the planning committee too? What's left to develop? That's my main question. You got like a too extensive and extensive and like what is like very in my opinion it's just very yeah, I think the way that was written originally is is that a goal of the plan is to provide the city with control over marina development. The word ultimate and too extensive, I think, are a little over the top. But that the harbor plan provides a mechanism for control over marine development. The plan is just a tool. It's not an ordinance. It's not a law. Yeah. It, right. it doesn't have to be acknowledged by anybody. The DNR, the private marina, the public marina, it's just a guideline. Uh, it would be considered at the city level as the new marina went through a planning process and the planning commission, but it does hold no legal authority. But to Mike's point, you know, with the written word conveys different meanings to different people. What I said isn't what you heard, what you heard isn't what I said. I know you heard what I said, but you didn't understand what I heard. I understood it. it <laughs> okay, I've got the original hybrid plan here, and it does say accepted by the Department of Natural Resources, which is what it was called at the time, as a policy guide. Okay, so it's not law, it's a policy guide. There is no teeth in that book. <laughs> it's not like a zoning ordinance. So I guess I'm a little unclear as so with this goal is the harbor is the harbor plan is who is providing the, the city with all of the control like who are we asking to provide a city I just that's where I get so and all the, <coughs> there really should be a discussion of what authority the city actually has and doesn't have because there's a lot of confusion everywhere about what you can do so I think in that example the city doesn't actually have control they have influence so if we were going to develop or redevelop the marina, we would have to go to the state and the state would look to the city for input or approval or whatever the word is. So that's the control you have. And a lot of this, some of these questions or a number of them you look at, you think you don't really have the ability to control those. And if you frame the questions to the public, should the city control this or regulate this, you have to be careful of what it means. And so I think in this survey, some explanation of what the plan's for, like you just did, JP, that it's a guide, like a master plan, would be appropriate because then it frames these questions of, of what's actually possible. Because all of this is cooperative, right? We all really do want the same thing, but when you try to write it down in words, it gets harder. So, um, well, and that's a good point. There are certain things in the harbor plan that the, the city and the harbor can control. So we can pass rules and regulations for certain things. And so I think as the public understands, they take these surveys, what things that we can regulate and control and which ones we just have influence over, I think is a good point. Because we can we can control the snow, the, the wake, right? No, you can't. See, and this is one of the big things. You do not control that water. Those are federal waters controlled by the state. 
Well, so we you can work the with the state to do that. We right. control this. We control the line. The lift, the you do not line. control the line. You went to the state. You asked for the line to be put in, and the state legislated or made an order. So you have the ability to enforce that. The city did not create that line. The city came up with a plan. They presented it through the process with the state. The state accepted it. That's great. That's the process. But tomorrow, the city couldn't decide that they want to move that line. You know what? The city could decide it. We would have to go through yeah, the city process. process. There's, There's a process for it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're kind of nitpicking a little bit on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have that. trouble with you know, uh, asking for the city to develop some type of process that gives it the ultimate control over too expensive the <laughs> <community laughs> development. Those are really nebulous that phrases. That should just be omitted. That's, uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. Yeah, don't even open that can of worms. <laughs> The process right now, like anytime somebody wants to develop something, put something new in, make a change, involves a planning committee too, even if it's on the waterfront. So there is a process in place to approve that. Maybe it's just provide the city with the approval, control, not approval control, but you know, just make it seem that the city does have something to say about the approval of a development. Well, it, it clearly does. They already have that, though. So yeah, it's pretty uh, right. from the shore side, we have significant controls, what the ordinance is for. And Michael's right. Uh, when he wants a new power, expand his docks, he has to go to the state of Michigan. And then they will come back and ask our opinion. But if we said no and they thought it was good, he'd get the project done. So we really have no ability to have ultimate control over any, anything up there. There are there. In, in terms of marina development. And that's the other part of these questions. When you use the word marina, I think it would be nice to clarify, are you talking about commercial marinas, municipal marinas, a marina at Harbor Point? That's a very vague term, which I think most people would turn around and say they're talking about commercial marinas, which is fine if that's what you intend. But that's a, another vague term. What's a marina these days? I don't think it's just limited to marina development either though. Could be any development that is on the waterfront. Somebody might want to try to put a hotel up in parking lot, your parking lot, or something. But that's different because the city controls all that. Right. That's that's not question. The, the zoning deals with that. Mm -hmm. But if if a private landowner on Harbor Point wanted to put a three hundred foot dock out into the harbor, the city has very little control. They have a lot of influence, right. and that's that's the key thing. Is you have influence, and that's why I struggle with this goal because it's asking the city to develop a unlimited, ultimate control over that process, on that, and we don't have. It. It's not I think because there's already a process in place that just needs to be deleted. And if we put too many things like that in, that we really can't control, people are going to ignore the things that we can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to I think pop, I, I pop think them just good. real quick because I did have some notes of some stuff I was going to say that I'm probably not going to say. But I did have a section on jurisdiction in the heart. The federal government owns the water. The state of Michigan owns the bottomlands in trust for the public. They don't own it the way you own your Jaguar or whatever. Um, the uh, city of Harbor Springs has various jurisdiction out to a half a mile from shore. Harbor Springs is a home rule city, so we're, we have all the advantages of being able to write our own rules. Uh, riparian rights are different on the Great Lakes than they are on inland rights. So riparian, riparians do have rights, but not the same as they do on Walloon or Burt Lake. Um, and the public has freedom of navigation to the high water mark. So these are all jurisdictional issues that um, are not under our control. How is riparian different on Walloon than here, for example? Um, I would have to go look it up again. Um, to tell you, but it's uh, the owner in the middle of the lake, you know, yeah. I think I, I, yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have the right to put a mooring out in front of your property, but you don't have necessarily the right to put in um, a water source where you're dr drawing water out of, the, out of the lake just as a, as a right, um, stuff like that. <clears throat> Getting back to this uh, sorry, goal here, uh, anybody have a problem if we don't just eliminate that from the plan? I think it should be eliminated. Okay. Should be okay. Yep. So you nod your head, Greg. Good. You okay with that, Victor? Yeah. Gone. 
Uh, next one, permit more boats to be docked within the harbor. Where? Remember, this is a, a goal or a, a now should our goal be to permit more boats to be docked in the harbor? When we say dock, we remember when this about, was are we talking this about was written, dockage per year or short term dockage? <coughs> doesn't delineate. I, I, mean, I doesn't think specify. it's just, you know, should we, should we increase or allow more boats to be docked within the harbor? Should be, and this was written when there was the ability of the commercial marinas and the city marina to expand their operations out to the limit line demand. So that's why it made sense. 22 years ago, wherever it was. If we eliminated it and someone, when we, we wanted to put a boat, got the boat, it doesn't stop that. No, because they and have it, rights. We're not, mm -hmm. So we're not encouraging, I mean, we're not encouraging, we're discouraging, but if you look at the top section of the survey, we as a table seem to feel we're pretty maxed out looking at our lines, looking at our space. So saying that we will permit it almost sounds like, so come on, come on in. But if, if we don't have it in there, people still could. If we don't have it as a goal, we still could take a look at what else we could do with our marinas and maybe have space, but it's not our goal to do it because we've done it. I, I think you're right, Eric. We This was in there because there was room to do it. So that made sense to leave it in the plan. Plans evolved, times have changed. We've extended. Uh, personally, I think it ought to be out of there. I do too. Doesn't mean you can't do more boats, but I looked at this being a encouraging where we must allow. And we're not in that position. Anymore. Need more docks to do more boats. And more parking. That's such a case by case situation. Well, the way it's worded, too. Again, I, I do know there's talk mm -hmm. among the other people. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. yeah, if it's in there or it's not there, they still can. Yeah, right. exactly. So take it out. Again, playing devil's advocate kind of relates to what I said earlier. I know there are people that feel like we could put more moorings in, you know, maybe even docks. So is that a question of? Would you prefer more boats and less of a queue or less safety or whatever? What are you going to give up if you at, let people put put more boats in the water, either at docks or in moorings? Is that the question? I look at this as a goal to permit more boats to be docked within the harbor. And when it was written, that made sense because there was room to have that happen and there were plans to have that happen. And it has happened. So now I don't think it's applicable and it, it should come out of the plan. Short, you know, limit the space of my, around the moorings. We have to start all over again. I'm sorry. So I'm saying that if we were to leave that in, <coughs> you know, permit for more boats to be on moorings within the harbor, for example. The choice would be if you do that, you're going to give up views, but you might give up some safety or whatever. So I guess the question is. I mean, that comment could come up from somebody who fills out the survey. And I think we just have to be ready for that. That's my only comment here. <clears throat> well, I'm sure we're going to hear. We've already heard some of that. The question today is, is, is that one of our goals at this table, to permit more boats to be docked in the harbor? No. And I don't think that it is. And that's why it doesn't mean we can't do it, but I don't think it ought to be listed as a goal. I agree. I think it ought to come out. It needs to be taken. I think, I think it's inevitable. <clears throat> As the population grows, the popularity gr grows, um, the general wealth of the public grows, more people want to have boats, and the pressure's there. Mm -hmm. And one of our challenges has been to maintain the quality of our experience here. And not not stacking a cheek by jowl is part of that. So we don't want to open the door to that comment. In other words, we just want to take it out. But that is that's our decision to make right now. I, I, don't I would feel second that. or third or fourth, whatever. I would agree with to take that out. Yeah. It seems to be a strong consensus. I'm looking at a lot of nodding heads. So, Victor, can we take that out of there? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, next one: maintain a slow to moderate pace development. 
and increased use of the harbor. Kind of hard to argue with that, isn't it? Or does that include, does that encourage continual development? I think that encourages it. <laughs> the goal was to have control over it, but the way it's worded to me, it's encouraging. I think the intent was to go whatever with whatever we do, we should go slow and make sure we're deliberate about it. But when you read it now, it, it almost mm -hmm. like it's encouraging you to maintain a slow to moderate pace development. Yeah. That says slow to moderate. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> That's me going up a hill on my bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Starts moderate, then you end up going slow. Is a different when you yeah. say maintain moderate going down? Is it different when you say maintain slow to moderate increase use of the harbor? They got pace development. We all want the harbor to be used. Yeah, but I, I read this and it, it looks to me like we're encouraging some rate of development. Yeah, it, I, don't, I don't want more development. It says slow it, it, or moderate, it, 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 and I don't know what harbor. that means. And maybe if we well, there's it, development and use. Right, there's this. Mm -hmm. That's one point. If they're different. Yeah. Development is a use. And I think the next point does address the use. So I think this one goes. You think this one goes? I, I think I'm feeling that too. <coughs> Are we okay with that? I mean, no, that's a lot of nodding heads think you're good. I like this one though. Uh, <laughs> uses and activities should give way to people who drink at Bar Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> to proposals that benefit the general public over those that favor private interests. So from the standpoint of the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem. With this. I think it stays like that. But it was not ranked high at the table. So what does mixed, that mean? There was mixed, yeah, you know, some people who got rated lower. So I rated it pretty high because I, I mean I think the accessibility is important to me. Uh, whether or not you have a space to put your mooring or a dock or not. But everyone that's why I like you know the, the flat fee for a mooring in a dock. It's not an auction system where the riches can get the docks kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's access it's accessibility. I think it's okay to leave it in. I do too. <clears throat> Anybody have an objection to leave it in? And Victor, is that a question you'd want to explore more through a survey? And if so, how I, mean, I think that might so because there's a variety of uses and activities when we got proposals. I mean, there's there's a lot there. And there's been a lot of uh, talk about you know port park and commercial uses there. So I think there's some questions about that, but mm -hmm. okay. Uh, next, on balance, natural features should not be compromised by development proposals. What does that mean? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it's what it's right I was hoping Esposito knew. <laughs> Is that like I have an opinion point? about this. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it fits in here anymore. So I don't natural, really know. What natural features would be compromised by development? Uh, uh, the shoreline? The shoreline? Yeah, the yeah. shoreline. You, yeah. Could, you could drive to it. I guess and if, if we're going to be that specific, we should probably be more specific if that's what we need because I mean, there's not that many trees on the shoreline. But just, right. I mean, it's, I'd vote to take it out. Or define what natural features means. Well, I don't, you know, I think we have a pretty good handle for a shoreline, shoreside natural features through the zoning ordinance. We have a place, considerable input, a lot of influence by the city over there. So. Is it necessary to have this in here? I don't think so. No. So much common sense that I, I don't think it's necessary to put it in. I mean, the parks and rec people could come and say, let's have a merry go round. But nobody would, nobody, nobody would let that pass. That's right. You know, so that's the only kind of natural feature wouldn't be compromised. So yeah. I would go on. Yeah. Uh, you, there was comment from the other side here. Maybe that shouldn't belong. Is everybody okay if it comes out, or somebody strongly feel it on stand? I can see what Tom Graham thinks. <laughs> okay, Victor, I think that comes out unless somebody's got next on balance. Uh, uses requiring intensive automobile parking the shore should be discouraged from using the harbor or using it as a base. Uh, you 
know, the most recent example of this is what we required the ferry boat people to do, which allowed them to use the dock at Ford Park, but not park in Ford Park. Uh, and I think that's what this sentence kind of alludes to. Those kinds of situations. So I like it, I guess is what I'm saying. I think it's good to bring it up and have some reference to that in the, <clears throat> in the plan. Uh, really, any other comments on that? Did anybody wound up about it? Victor, what do you need from us on that statement? I think that's enough. I think I can generate some okay. question, question about that. Development should recognize the functional differences, difference of seasonal versions <laughs> versus transient. development. I'm struggling with this a little bit. Yeah. So, the seasonal boaters are the are our boating community here and the transients are the people who are coming through and then they're leaving. Again. Not necessarily. I mean, some of us, you know, stay at the docks. You know, you're still a week or two. You're a transient. I live through <laughs> Almost sounds to me as if it was written with, with a municipal marina in mind. You know, what, what percentage are you going to have seasonal? Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely about the marina. So, what are the functional differences between seasonal and transient? There's some uh, seasonal has more parking demands generally because most folks don't show up by water with a car, although that's changing. We see more boats now, Michael, that show up and they're there for a week and They've got one or two vehicles that you're giving a parking thing to. So that I think those lines have gotten blurred as time has gone by. Try and rent a car for enterprise during season because people plan ahead them. and have the cars delivered here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I see that much difference between those two categories. Not anymore. So we can, can we strike that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The acquisition of private uh, property is not a primary objective of the plan. The opportunity should be recognized. It's sort of a gimme, I think. Yeah, I just. Where is land? Well, they would not take that. Can't well, they can't sell it to us. That's the other thing. Again, we did try to get that, yeah. that parcel. I don't know why we shouldn't leave it in. I mean, the odds are very small. Yeah. I don't know why we shouldn't leave it in. It's not contrary to anything we're going to do. Yeah, it doesn't hurt us. It doesn't hurt it. It doesn't cause us to do something we don't want to do, and it leaves the door open. I mean, who knows? So are we okay if we leave that in there like that and just run with that hole? Last, I hope. Or is there more? Oh, thank God, no. <laughs> the plan should be directed by the limitations of natural features and conditions taking precedence over private development objectives. We've already said that so we kind of got before. through that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we okay if that's stricken in? I think we got a good yes. handle on it. Victor, you all right with that? Yep. Cool. Uh, on the rest of these, what were you looking for us to? Uh... So this was just more just to let you know what, you know, okay. based on the average numbers, what you guys thought were the most important goals and what you thought were the least important goals. Um, and it seems like the sums that we have been eliminating um, kind of have been ranked as least important. Actually, I, if you look at the least important goals in here, we addressed pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was a good assessment. You did. Is the end game to, um, <laughs> Survey everybody in the community. Get as much public input as we can. Yeah, this is uh, from, from um, local and resort. It'll be happening this summer. Yeah. And is it on, in the form of a survey? They will be online surveys through Survey Monkey. They'll be we'll advertise in the Harbor Light and we'll advertise on social media that where you can take the surveys at. Um, so virtually website. anybody could take it. Well, well, virtually anyone can, yes. We'll ask the question, you know, are you uh an area resident or your visitor or whatnot. But yeah, anyone can take it. But we'll also have public informational as part of this plan to have two meetings this summer here where people can come in person and, um, and give their opinion on the goals. 
And is it correct that you've ordered football helmets for everybody at this table <laughs> when we get to July and August? I have not. And so after the survey uh, has uh, been filled out by all the constituents, we distill that data and it would help us form the plan. Yeah, so I, I imagine the, once once we get that public information, that feedback back, um, we will then reconvene at the Harvard Commission and say, all right, here's what we said, here's what the public says. Is there anything we, else we need to change about these goals? Is there anything we need to add? Anything we need to take out or remove? Uh, because maybe you have had your opinions here, but maybe these strong opinions from the public that change your mind or need to be things we haven't thought about yet that might need to be incorporated. So that would probably happen probably in September ish time. And we get a final plan for the, the Harbor Commission to approve at um, October. We already put together the whole background, all that part's done, you know. That, so right now we're just focused on the goals. I mean, really so, for example, if uh, this I mean, survey always seems to get the answer you want by designing the survey. But let's say um, the survey came back and said we need 24, 24 7 dockage all the way up to the end of weekly and more moorings and so on and so forth. That doesn't mean or obligate us to recommend that. No, not at all. Not at all. Bingo. It's just, Back our just, job is to, just to kind of get, take the temperature or whatever you want to ourselves. Yeah. Okay. We do this with the master plan process too. There's always going to be vague questions and it's really hard to educate people and ask them questions at the same time. Otherwise, you find yourself, you know, here's the plan, read through the plan and answer the questions. Well, no one answers the questions because they don't want to read through the entire document. So obviously, you are the experts that were appointed here by the, the city council, theoretically, so you make the decision, but the, the public feedback should at least in part inform the deliberations, yes. so. Um. And and the goals we the survey, you should delineate the area here because the discussion pertains. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want it widespread? Do you want it Harbor Point? Do you want it down to Roaring Brook? Or do you want it focused on our Asian too. You, you really need to think about. I'll well, do my best to formulate the questions. I it's don't have the answer, but that will right. generate the amount of. Well, we can't just go to separate districts and ask questions. We have to make it open for everybody. No, I Which, under, you can we'll ask, be able you to can determine ask. where their information is coming from. Huh? And Greg, your, your question's on the money. We aren't obligated at all, but it's an opportunity for the public to give us what they think. And maybe as Victor said, we miss something or we find out something, uh, you know, it's gonna cause us to go and reevaluate. I don't know. I expect we're gonna hear all kinds of things, much yeah, of which I, we've already dealt with at this table. And uh, we're gonna be doing some education in the public and we're gonna be hearing some things that some people are disappointed because they can't do what they wanna do. But uh, you know that our job is to boil that all down and and then go from there. And a word of caution on when we do get the survey results, and I've mm -hmm. seen this through a lot of different surveys, is that if you ask two specific questions, very specific, people that are, don't understand, they're not experts. And then so you ask broader, vaguer questions, and then you don't get clear answers because right? it means like, you know, what does beauty mean to you? What does character of the area mean to you? You know, those kinds of questions. So it's right. it's it's a it's it's a hard, Tough. it's not easy. And I and I know Michael Spazio has, has talked about it before, you know, like these are a lot of a lot of these goals are vague. And you know, subjective, and that's just part of the nature of planning. But some data is better than no data. Yeah. Well, the opportunity for the public to be heard. Yeah. That's really what we're about. And we'll learn something one way or the other. Whether we act on it, totally up to us. We're going to get them all out. Yeah, two other just questions, real quick. On the seven goals that we all agreed on, are those incorporated in the survey somewhere? Just to confirm we can, all that. I will I'll definitely incorporate goals that just so we can reaffirm or reconfirm the. Yes, you know, the public and, thinks this is important too. And I didn't see any questions related to um, what kind of priorities they might have for future investment. Do Are they more interested in the reconstruction of Ford Park or are they more interested in uh, new build, Harbor Master Building? Well, Karen, this wasn't, this wasn't me, my questions. This was just the goals literally taken from the current plan and having you all evaluate the course of those goals. I will formulate questions based on these goals in this conversation, um, such as that, right? You know, we talked about the things that are even in our capital improvements plan, for example, about Ford Park. You know, like, do we want to consider circulation in Ford Park? You know, how how much of a priority is that? You know, but but those kinds of decisions are not related to the harbor. Not okay. 
business yeah. decisions as we go. So that would be just up beyond Harbor. Yes. Okay, can we uh, move on, Victor? Are we good with? Yes. You good with this? Thanks for putting that all together. Yeah. Uh, review commercial license applications. Victor, we had how many? Four of them? Four. The last one that tagged on, I just got outfitters. Um, and that's the same amount that we always get each year IBS, Wallstrom, Outfitter, and Terry Myers. Great. Are there any questions for city manager on that? Mm -hmm. uh, Harbor Master Update, Michael? Make it really quick because you want to go for a bike ride on OGB. So I got another <laughs> beat. <laughs> uh, we've got opening men opening Monday, the 16th. Um, you guys might have noticed that all the moorings are in. Those guys got those done super quick. They really did. Um, a day and a half. Two days. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news is that we've repaired the sewer line outside the building, found out that it had a uh, five and a half inch drop from the uh, the drain to the building, which caused it to. Yeah, it got pretty messy. So you think that might have been caused from yeah, the of that sheet pile? That's what happened. I was thinking about that today. I bet you, because that guy sat right over that spot. What I saw you dig it up. Team Elmer's evidently had some, uh, there was a problem with Team Elmer's and their installation. So, but it's all straightened out now by Northern Excavating. And they got that done today in literally an hour. So, they did a great job. Uh, number two, we now have new carpet in the building, um, which I didn't think would happen until the middle of June. Put the pressure on Tommy B. Hand and he got out on the course, which was great. Um, what else? Oh, public bathrooms are now reopened because we fixed that sewer line. Um, they're clean and ready to go. Where was I? Number two. I've got three returning crew members and one new hire. I'm bringing uh, Pat Rowell on board. It was a seasonal slip holder with us years ago. And she'll be able to give me some time off after Labor Day. So I'm in there by myself all the time. Um, what else do we have here? Courtesy Dock and Ford Park were installed, thanks to Zach and Andy over here. And we're also going to be taking off the risers I put in the dock two years ago. Um, we've lost almost two and a half feet of water, so we're going to have to get those things to a usable height again. But the plan is to take those off in sections with their help over the weekend. And that's something you guys can work with? That's awesome. Well, yeah. And we can stash them in a building on the hill somewhere. That's right. why you're an essential service. They're going to go to Irish Boat Shop in Building 5, I think, right, Mike? Five or six, yeah. Okay. Six. All right. That's collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have 27, actually 28 boats coming to us for Boyne City Yacht Club, which is going to fill the place up. I did emphasize to those folks, because we did have a developer waiting list, that I'm not going to put anybody in the east side of the harbor, unless the weather looks good for the weekend. Don't want any more damage than we had last year. So a lot safer for everybody all the way around. As far as regatta goes, we're at 100 boats right now, and we will most likely, because of the size of the fleet and the boat shop taking quite a few of the smaller boats, most likely need to ask you folks if I could use the east dock for any overflow. I need space for six or seven boats right now. Don't want to raft anything more than two deep on that west wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, it just makes for a safety issue over there. So if you guys will let me go ahead and use that east dock, I'd be happy to do so, which will have a lot of pressure off Irish Boat Shop as well. Yeah. So, Michael, you're looking at maybe the south third of the floating dock on the east yeah, side? the south side of the east, the south the whole south side, or, or just half of it, or what you think? I'd you probably know? only be using half of it, yeah, because we'll have them too deep in that raft right there. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, it's, from my perspective, that's uh, it's the right thing for us to do. Yeah. We and it, so we to, let's go all the way. One more thing, I've yet to hear back from the DAC, but the last time I talked to um, Kristen Ritter, they had 11 boats signed up for the event. And the thing is that each one of those boats is over 60 feet. Jim. There's actually 92 foot Viking that wants to come to us. So we may have to tell those guys, I don't have room for any more than 15 at this point. So we'll have to see what we end up with lengthwise. But, and again, I don't want to use the East Wall for those folks. Yeah, like to use that for smaller boats and be able to accommodate the trailer guys. What was their original ask? 15 boats? Right. Right? Both their original right? ask was for 20. Yeah, I thought it was closer. Yeah, it was 20 boats, but the size of the boats is just getting, it's kind of ridiculous right know. now, but yeah. Yeah. And that's what we have. Yeah. Good job, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Ooh. Yes. Can I just add to the regatta thing? So this 100 boat limit, you know, we've had it before, but we've never had it. And we're going to feel it this year because <clears throat> seasonal slips have filled up. So we raft too deep off the end of ours, which actually goes into the 
roadway, but we're going to be three deep this year in order to accommodate boats. Just so we're all making adjustments, but that's something we normally keep boats to. We'll be three and it's possible there'll be one raft that's four. So we'll just have to work with that. That's a lot of boats. Yeah. Do you require mooring lights on the out or anchor lights on the outside boats? We haven't. We can if that's what you I want to see. I think you probably ought to at night because that, that fairway is going to get quite a bit narrower between the north end of the mooring field and your dot. And having a wall of white lights out there would probably help. We can do that. It's basically going to be all J 111s on the outside of that. Right. Because you got those fish with leaks coming up. And I'll be asking for that if we're going to use the east wall for people coming to and from the courtesy dock after dark. So make sure that happens. Cool. I'm trying to hustle along here because I hate going past 530. Uh, we do have one item that came up, uh, a seasonal slip holder. Uh, Joe Detalia uh, passed away about a month ago. and He had uh, already paid for his 45 foot, 45 slip dock there. Uh, and we've not had to deal with this before uh, because we, we don't do refunds, so to speak, because once you pay, you go. But Joe has passed. He doesn't have a wife who would use the boat. And his estate has asked us if we uh, would consider sending him back the dollars for that. It puts the city in a little bit of a bind because we can't fill it with another boater now. The season is too far along. <clears throat> but in the big picture, it seems like the right thing to do to me. It's... You know, we're running a business and this happened and we got to deal with it. The There's not a waiting list? Pardon me? There's not a waiting list? There is, but if we went through the waiting list now, we'd get all the way down to number 90 because everybody's already committed to boats and they're not going to move in, in June. So if we started to, and correct me if you think I'm wrong on that, Michael, but uh, if we went through the waiting list to fill that with the next guy, uh, he's already got a spot someplace. You're absolutely correct. Can I sublet it? Not me personally. Okay. No, we'll, we'll, we'll Consider it. I got a plan for that slip already. Uh, we actually don't sell it any of those. I know. So. Yeah, what would happen to the go, go, revenue generating plan? Pardon me? It yeah, would go into the transit. I can use this as a transient all day long. Well, I was going to say what I was going to say. Would make the same amount of bills? No, probably a little less. A little less, yeah. I think it's appropriate. But we'd be awful close. Mm -hmm. That's why we like it. Yeah, I, mean, I do too. Yeah. So, uh, I would move that we refund uh, the Detalia State his second support. I would second that. Uh, Instead of just his, is that, is that isn't that a precedent-setting move? And is it against? We could just say that in the, in the event of someone's demise, that the estate, as long as they have the money, they could be refunded because this group may not be here the next time that happens. And the same question will come Generally up. Generally, the authority falls city manager to make a decision. So we came to the, the board because it's not in the rules. So I right. Mean, so I'm just saying, why not make a rule? If someone's dead. You could consider making a rule. We'd have to he won't get the money, but somebody yeah. will. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm all for making rules that solve problems. But we all been at this table a lot of years. Oh, it's yeah. the first time we've had the that. issue. Uh, I, I kind of like the case by case because yeah. you never really know what's going on. It does take a lot of our time. So it's an exception. How much dough are we talking about? Just curious. Oh, $7,590. $7,590. Seven, 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 Send it back and Michael can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Uh, we have a motion that has been seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye same for opposed. Thank you all so much for your time. Any comments from the floor before we close? Any comments from the table? A long day for us. I very much applaud your uh, public service. Thank you. And we are adjourned. We'll see you uh, June 8th, 4 o'clock. Right